Hello everybody, I hope you're all feeling good out there. Uh, this little video is a video I kind of should have done about a week ago, uh, but there's been lots of other things going on. And this video really is about this album, Mind Elevation, now 20 years old. And I just wanted to share a lot of something about this album um, because it was an interesting time in my career in 2002. Uh, just became a father, um, was coming out of the experience of having unbelievable response uh, to Smoker's Delight and to Kabul Soul. And uh, there's a kind of well-known kind of saying in the world of making albums, they claim that the third album is your most difficult album. But a lot of people don't know that my De Mind Elevation is not my third album, it's my fourth album. <clears throat> so if that theory is true, it wasn't really true for me. Um, but this was a really, really challenging album to make for a number of reasons. Um, following up, I mean, actually following Kabut Soul, um, not just following Kabut Soul, but also um, following uh, Smoker's Delight was quite challenging um, because Smoker's Delight was a concept album. And it's like, well, how do you follow an, a concept album with just an album, which is what my breakaway and my freedom was in making Carbon Soul, uh, was going into a more world of producing vocal songs and stuff like that. So then it comes Mind Elevation and on the journey of making music as a producer, you're always adventuring, you're always trying new things, or at least you should be. Um, but for me, it was also, I was in a position I'd never been in before in my life. Um, you know, I was earning money, um, I was quite comfortable, but I wasn't comfortable, if that makes sense. Um, I moved into quite a big house, which was uh, a massive shift from my reality of where I've come from and what I grew up in. And I'm, it never really sat comfortable with me at that time in my life because I spent a lot of time fearing what I'd created. Um, there's one thing having a dream and having aspirations, uh, but when you get to them certain places, it can feel absolutely alien to you. And then you're kind of searching and you're also, I, I'm only speaking from my experience here. You're also, Searching for searching for something new and trying to find inspiration in different places, but at the same same time, trying not to let any form of success change you. Well, at least that was the mentality that I'd grown up with as far as coming where I come from. Don't forget where you come from. Uh, when shit's popping, don't don't shout about it. Um, don't pick yourself up. All the things that go against the flow of being positive. <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, that was kind of my personal ghetto mentality um, was not to really shout about things and stuff like that hold it down when really you should really express how great things are and what you're doing this is where I am now in my life you know so my deliberation I made quite a lot of changes a lot of decisions in what I was doing based on my reality changing um, I wanted to work with more vocalists um, I wanted to mix my album in a different space. Um, I was using the MPC a lot more. Uh, back in the days, I wasn't really using MPC. I was using uh, Akai S950 and uh, Akai S1000. I'm just using a mother keyboard and triggering my stuff from there. Now it's going into the MPC world because of my heavily, heavily influenced and inspired world of hip hop. Um, so, and also, having the access to be able to buy equipment now, not just making equipment on just what I have and trying to make things work. Um, you know, so that then I started getting into compressors and 
all this other stuff for my studio and actually building a studio. I'd never really had a studio before. I had like a computer and a sampler, do you know what I mean? In my mum's lounge or in my own bedroom or, you know, it was very, very basic. So to actually build a studio, buy monitors and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I don't want to bore people with the tech. So that was one shift. Uh, then the other shift, like I said, was working with new singers and, and finding new, new, new artists to collaborate with. Taking my album somewhere different to mix. Uh, which I went and mixed this album with Mark Gamble, big up Mark Gamble <coughs> in Nottingham. Um, but also um, working and collaborating, like I said, with different people. I brought China B, big up China B, into the zone, an amazing, amazing, amazing singer and an amazing, amazing songwriter. Um, you know, I brought my, my homeboy, Toz180, Toz rest in peace. He co-wrote Date With Destiny on here. So I'm going to go through some of the tracks. And there's also Robin Taylor Firth, who's played, who played keys with me for many, many years. And, um, you know, co-wrote some of the stuff on here as well. Um, including this track, Mind's Eye, that's playing in the background. Um, and then also, with the success of the previous albums I spoke about, I was, up, like I said, I was in a different financial position. So I decided to take this album on the road and go on tour. So I brought in... Uh, we had China, like China B, as I said, as a co-writer. Um, we had um, uh, Sarah Garvey, another singer from Leeds, that came and joined us on the road. I uh, had my band that I'd had before, which built up um, with more... Uh, we, we did some shows with string sections, with horn sections. Basically, we went kind of big on the production, and um, which included two tour buses and all that kind of stuff spent crazy money anyway on a tour um but the album was not that greatly received um because it was seen as just too much of a shift away from what i would i've been doing you know um but it's an album i'm very proud of because i've i sense the transition in there and the the want to escape the pigeonholing of whatever had happened in the past, even though I'm totally grateful for the music I've made prior to this album. Um, if you're not adventuring as a, as a musician, as a producer, if you're not trying to go into the unknown, then I don't see how you how you find out, you know? It's, it's about going off the beaten track a little bit, you know? And I think that whether you play an instrument or whether you paint or whether you write a book or whatever, you kind of do that along the way, you know? Um, and along that way, you find gold. You might not find it in the time that you make it, but you will find it eventually one day, even on reflection, like we're doing today. Um, so yeah, I mean, like just going into tracks, this track says here that's playing in the background, uh, which samples Roots with a quality uh, by Third World. This was me still, I believe, keeping the lineage of what had happened previously with my dub influences and reggae influences. Um, and then there's songs like 70s, 80s, written by LSK, um, which is a song I'm super, super proud of because I actually remember me and LSK had lost contact for a while and we connected at a hip hop night at the warehouse and I took him to my car and I had this loop playing and I was like, bro, man, I got this beat. And he said to me, Lee, known to me, he said to me, um, You've always got melody, G. You've always got melody. You know what I mean? He was like, send me that beat, let me do something. And then we've been reminiscing anyway about our upbringing and everything that was not just inspired of us, but what was around us and what we went through. So the subject matter of being a 70s baby and an 80s child is totally us. Do you know what I mean? And the expression of us, and I feel that's why this song connects with a lot of people, especially a lot of people in, in the UK, you know, because there's a lot of references there that are connected to our upbringing and growing up, you know. So that's a song I'm super, super proud of. Um, we made a music video for Know My Name. Um, you know, I do believe that I've ventured more into R&B world as well uh, with my productions on this album, which um, I feel did connect with my my dub foundation of my fan base. Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a spread across, but here I am as a producer, adventuring and not being afraid to step out of that zone because these are all my influences and all my inspirations, you know? It's, I'm not just inspired by one genre of music or one zone, you know? And I still don't believe I am, you know? 
Uh, I'm a digger at the end of the day. I've always digged music. I've always collected records. And uh, if anything, I would if anything I would pick out pick out of that that helped me to be that way is hip hop. You know, but I'm not a, I'm not a hip hop artist. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm more than I'm more than that in my respect of as a, as a creative and as a producer. I just see myself as somebody who makes music now. You know, um, I'm definitely always a will be a b boy. You know. Pass me that kilo of mezcal and I'll break. <laughs> Probably break my neck, but yeah, I'll break. But yeah, I, I, I definitely always pay homage to hip hop because hip hop is my foundations of how I make music, how I listen to music, um, helped me discover so much music and that turned me into the, the digger that I am and the, the record collector that I am, you know? Um, and I'll always have the approach, I think, that of deconstructing music in that way with that hip-hop mentality what i believe that hip-hop gave me you know it's like the way that i listen and the way that i dissect music is because of hip-hop totally totally because of hip-hop so when i say i feel i'm more than a hip-hop artist that's not a disrespect to being a hip-hop artist at all do you know what i mean i believe there's more to my bro than hip-hop that's what i'm saying so um and then there's songs on here like Environment that China B wrote. They've got vocal production by Glenn Poole, who I actually did a post about last week, uh, celebrating 30 years of Set Me Free. And Glenn Poole um, was the writer, uh, the vocalist on that on, on that song. Um, yeah, uh, and Glenn Poole was to help with the vocal production, with Environment, uh, with China B. Um, you know, also Robbie and Taylor Firth on keys there as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like deep individual stories, as there always is with my albums, you know. Um, the track Thinking of Amara was a very personal track uh, related to Robin, um, you know, and, you know, quite an emotional time of losing somebody. Um, and this song was dedicated to, to that soul. Um, you know, I just, we used to just find so many moments, especially me and Robin, when we'd sit in the studio and we, a lot of our productions and a lot of our working together came out of the conversations that we had. You know, it was more about that. We would chat a lot, you know what I mean? And then do the music, do you know what I mean? It was part, it's all part of the ingredients of the, of the songwriting and the production of going deeper, you know? And I like to chat, chat. I'm a, I'm a deep chatter. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> so, um, what else we talk about? We could talk about, wow. I mean, there's a few things on here. There's um, Humble, which I think is more like a beat maker thing, um, which I feel as well, connects the, li the lineage between Smokers Delight and this album. That's the, there's always little, I would say there's always little threads of that in there, because it's me, it's part of me, you know? Um, I want to go to the song, actually, uh, Date With Destiny, which, instead of it just sounding of me, sounding like me waffling, whoop, instead of it just sounding like me waffling, I'm gonna flip it over and put the track on, just so that for reference. And this song, actually before I put it on, this song that is written uh, by my good friend who's no longer with us, Toz180. Um, I remember Toz having a conversation with me about this concept, about talking about all these different sides of characters, whether they would be ego, confidence, doubt, fear, hope, and all these, these different aspects that we can have of ourselves being actual individual characters, you know, and describing them in a song. And this is what Date, Date With Destiny is totally filled with. Toz was such an incredible artist when it came to uh, writing lyrics in such a profound way that you might not catch it straight away, you know, or what it truly means will come to you at some point, you know, and this, this song is such a, a deep song and, it, and and definitely it has a more commercial aspect of Nightmares and Wax than any other song I think I've written uh, sounding wise a bit more radio friendly as such um, so this is another venture for me um, but also we was completely honoured to have a video made um, 
uh, by a good friend of mine, Anna, who shot the video in LA, uh, you know, with the RT brothers, Rich and Tone, um, amazing dancers, dance for Michael Jackson, uh, choreographer for Michael Jackson for Madonna, for all kinds of people. Do you know what I mean? And for them to actually just make a music video absolutely free for us because they love the music and are big fans of Nightmares of Wax so much. Um, hopefully my turntable's not turned off. There we go, one second. There we go. And uh, yeah, this is Day With Destiny. It's, uh, when this song comes on and like, you know, I still have my music on my playlist and stuff like that, so and sometimes I still use iTunes, old school on the phone and hit it on random and occasionally my music comes on. But when this song does come on, I'm in, I'm in the car. Um, I immediately think of my brother Toz, you know what I mean? And I miss him so much because he was such an incredible character. Dark, witty, unpredictable, you know. Um, and the amazing voice of China B, uh, who I'll tag down here, she's down as MP3, she's got Jack and Singer. And this is Day With Destiny, um, Mind Elevation, 20 years old, which is crazy. Um, and what I will say is like, I mean, I've written something down here, which I've not read this back actually um, for a while. So I'm gonna read it now. This is what I've put, not the destination, but the journey. For all the souls involved, be it musically, creatively, environmentally, or just listen and enjoy, you are part of this ongoing journey. It's not important where we are going, but to enjoy the journey and make the most of it as it happens. Emotion, feeling, sharing, and belief are important factors on this trip. These factors are the key to the momentum of this journey. Is this just me being deep, or is this just my soul responding? I think, in brackets, no, the latter is the point. Imagination is the language of the soul. Wow. I kind of needed to hear that right now. <laughs> So there, I just wanted to share this celebration of Mind Elevation. Also, the title Mind Elevation, I actually got from listening to WBLS in New York. In I think it was like 1999, I was in New York and uh, I was listening to the radio and somebody rang up for a shout out or something on the, on the radio. And this person that, that, that rang up went, mind elevation, baby, mind elevation. And I was like, I love that. I'm having that. And that's how I came, with the, came up with the title, Mind Elevation. Anyway, that's my story. I've gone on for like nearly 18 minutes. I hope you enjoyed what I shared here. Happy 20th anniversary, Mind Elevation. One love. Ciao.